Hi, and thank you for watching another video from PLCGurus.net's YouTube channel. Uh, if you find this video useful and you want to see more videos like it, please do subscribe to our channel. Um, and again, if you do find it useful, I, I do encourage you to click the like button below. Uh, just a quick plug uh, for our blog site before we get going. You can visit us at www.plcgurus.net. Come on over and, and check it out. Thanks. Okay, so today we're going to be focusing on IP communication types uh, as part of our Networking Essentials video series. Uh, so, of course, we're going to be focusing in on industrial Ethernet networks. I mean, that's what we're all about here at PLC Gurus. So let's get right into it. So we really have three main communication types that we want to talk about today. There is a fourth, which I'll mention, but we're not really seeing it yet in the industrial controls world. But let's get there. Starting at number one, we have something that's called unicast. So this is a one-to-one -one or point-to-point -point communication type. Next on the list, we have something called multicast. So this is a one-to-many or in our way of implementing a producer-consumer communication type. And we have something called broadcast, or this is a one-to-all communication. Okay, and I'm going to cover each one of these in a little more detail as we move along here. But I do want to mention this fourth one just for completeness, really. Um, like I say, it's not really it, uh, the industrial floor yet at this point yet that I've seen anyway. And this is something called Anycast. So, like I say, we're not seeing this in industrial control device networks yet. Um, and Anycast is really, uh, it really leverages the IPv6 uh, technology or protocol. So, I mean, that's as much as I'm going to say about that. Uh, so let's get going. Okay, Unicast communication. So like I said, Unicast is a direct point-to-point -point or one-to-one -one connection. So you can see I have controller A um, connecting directly to controller B through a, I mean, there could be a switch in there. Um, but irregardless, it's a direct point-to-point -point connection. And the way we create a point-to-point -point connection is through the use of the message instruction or the explicit messaging model, okay? I did do an article uh, on producer-consumer explicit messaging, which I'll link to here. It is a, a fairly good read, so I do encourage you to go check it out. Okay, so with a direct connection, controller A can pass data directly to controller B uh, using its... MAC address and, and IP address and MAC address, the combination of those two. And likewise, controller B could pass data directly to controller A as well. Really, under low load conditions, Unicast is really a, a good option. And most devices that we're seeing do support Unicast. You'll see when we're, you're configuring, say, a, a 1734.io a module, there is a, an option a little checkbox there to, to configure it as a unicast connection. So let's increase the load a little bit here. And let's say we have many devices that we want to maintain connections to. So here we have several HMIs. We have uh, some Kinetics 5500 servo drive racks. We have a handful of uh, PowerFlex drives. We have a, some compacts, a control logics. So you can see here that as the number of devices we need to maintain that one-to-one -one connection, it can quickly uh, overwhelm our CPU. And that's really the biggest drawback of unicast communication. Okay, let's get into the, some of the advantages of unicast communication. So one, it's a direct point-to-point -point connection. So this is ideal for real-time applications. PLC, HMIs, servo control. These are all real-time applications. It's easy to implement. Connections are optimized for speed. And you can use unmanaged network switches without flooding other ports and the network. Be because the link is established point to point, the switch has no need to go out other ports because it's learned the MAC address of the sender and receiver. Okay, some disadvantage of Unicast. I think we already touched on some of those. CPU resources needed to maintain all the connections, yes. So if you go back to our slide where it was showing all of those different devices, the CPU or processor has to maintain all of those different connections. There obviously is a limit on the number of connections because every connection is taking away valuable resources. 
It's inefficient when sending the same data to many clients at the same time, i.e. Mul multiple HMIs in a cell, probably the best example of that. And it leads to ultimately poor network performance and utilization. Okay, so moving on to multicast communication. Now we can implement multicast communication in a Logix controller using the producer consumer model or produced and consumed tags. So the producer consumer model leverages multicast communication for sharing data to many hosts or clients. Uh, one or more controllers can be a producer of the data, and one or more controllers can consume that data. So you can see it very clearly here that we have one data stream coming from this producing controller, and then there are multiple subscribers to that data stream. It's like walking into a room and saying, hey, here's a bunch of data, and then walking out. You don't really know who got that data. If anyone wanted to listen to it and wanted to hear it, they would be listening and they would consume it. And who didn't want it, that would just be filtered out because they weren't listening to you in the first place. So you can think of it as kind of that scenario. You walk in the room, say, here's some data. And whoever wants it, takes it. Whoever doesn't, just doesn't pay any attention to it. Um, so obviously it's not that... It's not that simple, uh, and there, there are some things that we need to implement at the switch level in order to do that filtering that I suggested there. But other than that, it's a, it's a very efficient mechanism for sharing data or similar data without maintaining multiple connections. We, we can have one connection that we're using to send out data to multiple consumers. So I hope that makes it very clear. So the advantages of multicast communication, it's not CPU intensive since only one data stream connection is needed at the producer. It's an excellent use of network bandwidth, again, because we're not sending duplicate data to all of the different consumers that want that data. We're sending a one data stream, and whoever wants to subscribe to that data stream can do so. And the number of consumers are not limited. So remember we talked about with Unicast, if you read on the, say, the 1756 uh, EMBT modules um, or the EN2T modules, it will explicitly tell you the number of concurrent connections that module or bridge can maintain at any given time. So this is why the more you pay, the more concurrent connections that module will be able to maintain. So with the producer-consumer or multicast communication method, we're not really constrained anymore because there's only one sender and maybe multiple consumers. So the disadvantages of multicast. So you're probably asking, well, what's a disadvantage? Well, you must use managed Ethernet switches to control multicast traffic through something that's called IGMP snooping. It's a really it's it's a filtering technology, and it has to be enabled. And if you if it's not enabled and you leave it unmanaged, or you just you're using multicast and you have unmanaged switches, if it's not being managed, it can quickly create broadcast storms because unfiltered multicast traffic effectively turns into broadcast traffic. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And we're going to talk about broadcast next, but essentially, if you are leaving your multicast traffic unfiltered. The sender or producer of the data is putting it into one port of your switch. And then if it's not being filtered, it's going out every single port on that switch. And if it's daisy chain as part of a star topology or whatever, and it's received at the next switch, it's sending all of that data out that switch and so on and so on. So very important when you're using multicast communication methods to ensure you're using a managed switch with IGMP snooping enabled. Okay, so the last communication type we're going to touch on today is broadcast communication. So like I said previously, let's say controller A here uh, sends out a broadcast packet into switch port 1. The switch, even though it's managed, says, oh, this packet has been identified as a broadcast packet, so I need to send that data out every single one of my switch ports. And if these uplink ports are connected to other switches, it's going to receive it on its 
uh, Upley port and say, oh, it's a broadcast packet. Everyone connected to me needs to see it. And if there's another switch down the line and so on and so on, broadcast messages or broadcast communication, if left unchecked, can quickly create what's called a broadcast storm because everybody is sending it to everybody. Okay, so broadcast communication is a one-to-all communication type, as I just explained. Every host on every report receives the message, irregardless of whether or not they need it. And as a result, any device that doesn't need that packet or isn't looking for that message is required to drop it. So the advantages of broadcast communication, as bad as it seems, really is a necessary communications uh, for devices to identify themselves on the network. So when you plug in a PLC or an HMI or a drive or what have you, it sends out what's called an ARP packet, which is a broadcast message. And it says to the switch, hey, I MAC address such and such. You need to add me to your address resolution table so the switch knows what devices are connected to what port. So it's necessary in that regard. The switch will create a table so it knows exactly what MAC addresses, what devices are connected on what port. Likewise, it's necessary for the devices to receive an IP address automatically via DHCP server. So when you go and plug your laptop or your computer or what have you, and you want to obtain an IP address automatically, your computer sends out a broadcast message and says, hey, I'm MAC address such and such. I need an IP address from you, the, the, the DHCP server god. And, and then it will go ahead and, and assign that uh, IP address to that device. So you can see it is a necessary communication method. Switches will learn the MAC addresses of the devices using the broadcast or ARP message that I just described. Okay, so disadvantages. I think the disadvantages are pretty self-explanatory, but let's just cover them. Broadcast messages need to be used sparingly to eliminate broadcast storms. Uh, devices that don't need the broadcast packet have to drop it, which uses just as much resources as it would if it needed that packet. So if I'm constantly sending out broadcast messages out every single port on the switch, every device on that port that doesn't need it has to drop it. I don't want it. It's going to keep going. I'm going to send it. I don't want it. I'm going to send it. I don't want it. And you get into this broadcast storm. And of course, if it's left unchecked and it's just running wild on your network, it could quickly take your network down. So that covers the three major communication types used in industrial Ethernet networks today, unicast, multicast, and broadcast. So I hope you found this video informative. And if you want to see more videos, please do subscribe to our channel. Give us a like and head on over to our blog site at www.plcgurus.net. Thank you.